Nintendo is already doing something right with the Switch too. Now, in case you haven't heard for some reason, Nintendo President Furukawa confirmed on Twitter that yes, a Nintendo Switch successor is real and it will be revealed during this fiscal year, so sometime between now and March 2025. Not only that, but there will be a June Nintendo Direct to talk about current Switch titles, but there won't be a mention of the Switch successor in that presentation. So while it's nice to get confirmation that the thing will be announced sometime soonish, we still don't know anything concrete about this new console. Except we do. During an investor's Q&A, Furukawa was asked if this new console will support Nintendo accounts, to which he responded, quote, Nintendo account was prepared before the launch of Nintendo Switch as a way to maintain long-term relationships with consumers across hardware generations. So we will continue to make active use of Nintendo account with the successor to Nintendo Switch as well. Now you might think, duh, this is obvious, of course Nintendo was going to do this thing, created the Nintendo account system so you could have access to your game library on any console that supports it. Yeah, it makes sense, but it's still refreshing to hear, especially because Nintendo doesn't always play things by the book, they do some weird Nintendo-like things every now and then. I mean, look at the voice chat solution on the Nintendo Switch. Just so completely weird and rather inconvenient, but it's still great to hear directly from the horse's mouth that the Switch 2 is going to support the Nintendo account. The part where he says that it supports long-term relationships with customers across hardware generations is even more of a comfort because maybe that means we'll see this on Switch 3, 4, and 5 if they still keep doing Switches at that point. It just goes to show that Nintendo is getting with the times and they're making things as convenient as possible because back in the days of the Wii U and the 3DS, when you bought a game on those systems, the games were locked to the hardware, not exactly your account. In fact, I have a friend who went through a hellish time trying to get his games back on his new 3DS, and uh, I'll just let him tell it. His identity has been protected, and you'll see why. My name is I am an artist. I am 28, and this is my Nintendo story. So I think around 2018, I lost my Nintendo account. It was really hard to get my account back, so originally I had to call Nintendo support due to my 3DS losing all of my games. I had no idea why. I think it was just switching between one system to the other. Very difficult. Even though it was connected to my Wii U account, it did not want to work. So I called them after around an hour of waiting. I, I finally got a hold of them. They said they would look into this and they will contact me when they are ready. So I wait around a week, I think. It's around a week and a half that I don't hear anything and then I decide to call them. I look up a lot of posts online and discussions on what should I do to handle this because I see that a lot of people have the same issue. So I'm contacting, I'm calling them again, but this time I am calling with the idea that I am going to tell them that my other 3DS was stolen. So I call them, I let them know, and what do you know, almost immediately, they, they change the accounts because apparently it was locked on the previous console, uh, the previous 3DS that I owned. I, I've owned a lot. It took a week and an hour call to do something that a quick, like, 15-minute call did the week after. It costed me a lot of time and then also had to tell them I had my 3DS stolen, which was not the case. All for something as simple as getting the ability to play Star Fox 64 again. What a sad story. Just very sad. But even now, this is not the case with the Nintendo Switch. If you have a Nintendo account and you bought games through that account, they will carry over to any other system you have as long as you have your account logged in on there. Of course, it's still not a perfect system. While you may be able to transfer your games, not every one of them supports save data cloud backup, which is just ridiculous in this day and age. Which is why if you upgraded from a Switch to a Switch OLED or even a Switch Lite, you can still transfer your data from one system to another, including the save data, so there's still that method. 
And it's not unlike how the Wii U and 3DS would do it, only they would use adorable Pikmin animations to show the data getting transferred. It's that Nintendo charm that I miss about the company. And you also gotta think this confirms that the Switch successor is going to have backwards compatibility with current Switch games. You might think there was never any doubt the system was gonna be backwards compatible because Nintendo is generally good about that. 3DS was backwards compatible with DS games, Wii U and Wii games, and Wii and GameCube games. The only time there's no backwards compatibility is if the successor console has a wildly different physical game format. The Switch was not gonna play Wii U games because it doesn't have a disc drive. And judging by another question Furukawa answered, this Switch successor should be described as a next model Switch. It was later translated by Nintendo as a successor to Nintendo Switch, but this just goes to show that it'll literally be a Switch number two. It's gonna be a handheld home console hybrid, it's gonna use cartridges that may be a bit different looking, but it'll still play Switch cartridges. And if this quote is to be believed, because why would he lie, then your digital purchases from the Switch 1 should carry over to Switch 2 because they're tied to your Nintendo account. It's a lot like how Nintendo's competitors have done things for a while. I've been using the same Xbox Live account since 2009, and all my purchases have been carried over from every Xbox generation to now. Then there's the PlayStation side of things. Things got a little shaky between the PS3 to the PS4, since PS4 is not backwards compatible with PS3 games, but still all my purchases on PS3, 4, Vita, and 5 are all under the same account. All the purchases I've made on PS4 seamlessly transitioned over to PS5, which is backwards compatible with 99% of PlayStation 4's library. It was never this easy on the Nintendo side of things. You've heard the tragic story of my friend and his Nintendo 3DS. It was with the Switch era that Nintendo finally made things so easy with the Nintendo account system. And believe it or not, this has all been in the works for quite some time now, even hinted as far back as 2014 during an investor Q&A with the late and great president of Nintendo at the time, Satoru Iwata. It's a long quote, so I'm not going to read the entire thing. Still, he talked about several things, such as the challenges of developing for both a handheld and a home console like the 3DS and Wii U, as well as how tough the transitions between consoles were since most of their successors had wildly different technology than their predecessors. He also mentioned how Apple and Android have one way of programming throughout all their platforms, and Nintendo should be like said platforms. Whether they ultimately need just one device will be determined by what consumers demand in the future. So I think the consumers have spoken, what with the Switch being the third best-selling console of all time. They love this form factor. So it would make sense for the Switch 2 to be quite similar to the Switch 1, which again Furukawa confirms that this successor is going to be a next model Switch. That isn't to say it's going to be like a mid-gen refresh or what have you, like a Switch Pro, remember those rumors? It's still going to be a new console, there's going to be exclusive games on it, it'll still be treated like a brand new platform. I gotta think it's going to use the same Switch branding, it's going to be called Switch 2, Super Switch, Switch U, whatever, and it's going to be backwards compatible with Switch games. I feel like it just has to. Iwata even made comparisons with Apple and Android. You know how Apple comes out with new phones every year. There's also new Android phones every year from the same manufacturers. It just feels like they're adopting kind of a similar model here, albeit not one where you, we get a new Switch every year. That would just be exhausting. The Switch has had different models these past seven years, sure, but the specs in the machine have remained mostly the same albeit only with changes in screen size, screen type, and battery life. The horsepower of the machine is the same across the board. But within the next 10 months, we're finally going to see an upgraded Switch. One that plays exclusive games that the Switch 1 cannot. It's going to have better specs inside of it. And as Furukawa said, it's going to use the Nintendo account system, which means everything on your Switch 1 is going to carry over to the Switch 2. You gotta believe it. This might just be Nintendo's most seamless console transition in a number of years, and I couldn't be more excited to see what this console is going to look like.